What's up sellers and welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm gonna share with you what sold over this past weekend. You can see we have some of Saturday and Sunday's sales right there. Uh, we also have a few items that sold overnight from Sunday night to Monday morning, and we're going to ship those out. In this video, I want to talk to you about the idea of small profits, whether they're worth it, and how you can shift your mindset to make small profits work for you and not be discouraged by those tiny profits. And by that, I mean like five or seven or $10 profits. Um, generally, when you're starting out, that's really good. As you scale up, those tend to be kind of nuisance profits. You want to go more for like the 15 to 20, $25 profits. However, I'm gonna share with you my thought process and the lens that I look through when it comes to those small profits. So stick around and we will go over that. Also, at the end of this video, if you stick around to the end, I have some fishing footage, went out fishing on Friday for about an hour out of my workday, which is shocking. That's kind of a lot of time for me to take out of my workday, uh, but I did it and I caught four fish and it was really exciting. So I will put those highlight clips at the end of this video. It'll only be about a minute or two of footage. However, stick around for that. Let's get to it. All right, so I uh, just have to load this stuff up and then get it to the post office. However, on our way to the post office, we have to stop by Dollar Tree because one of my replenishables sold on Mercari. So I need to go pick that up and put it in this pre-labeled box. I have my tape gun and uh, then that will go to the post office. So let's roll. All right, so got that packaged up on my way to the post office. I'm actually going to UPS to drop this off because UPS accepts the USPS packages and then postal workers come and pick them up later on. So I'm headed over there. Um, might go get uh, something to drink and then back home to, uh, to finish up work. I am going to be taking some time this afternoon to take my oldest son out to uh, to Bass Pro Shop. He has been feeling kind of uh, distant from me, he said, and he wants to do some father-son one-on-one hanging out. And so we're going to go to Bass Pro, check out the aquarium, look at the fish, walk around the store, maybe get a little uh, treat or snack or something. So that'll be this afternoon. We may film some of that. We may not. Probably will. So yeah, that is uh, what's happening this afternoon. That'll be shown in a later video. But uh, let's move on with the day. And I want to talk about allowable profit amounts. Now, as new beginner sellers on eBay or Amazon or Mercari, Poshmark, what have you, uh, your allowable profit amount uh, is going to be different for each case. Now, for myself, um, I really like to see profit amounts in the like 15, 20, 25 dollars as a minimum. However, I got this question from a YouTube subscriber recently on one of my videos, it was actually on my how to start selling used books with Amazon FBA video. Uh, I will link that in the card above. Uh, this subscriber, Gary, said, thank you. It's called work because it works. Love that. But how do I get excited over what seems to be small potatoes? $5 here, $6 there. No offense. No offense taken. My response was this. I totally get that. Sometimes I move into the same mentality that small profits don't matter, but truthfully, they all matter. A $1 bill is just made up of 100 pennies, a seemingly insignificant denomination of money, but put together, they matter. Also, I reframed my mind to think like this. If I can buy a book for $1 and make $5 net on it, I can use that $5 to buy five more books to each make $5 net. So we're at 25 bucks. Then I can use that $25 to buy 25 more books to make $125 net. Beyond that, I would imagine that you probably aren't starting with just $1, so you'll be able to move a lot faster than my example stated above. $5 profit by itself is nothing really, but uh, what you can do with the $5 profit is everything. Obviously, the more and more you sell through different platforms, especially if you are fulfilling those yourself, 
um, you have to make sure it's worth your time. And, so, and eventually the $5 profits just won't be worth your time. However, starting out as beginners or intermediates, especially $5 can really matter. Uh, if you are working a full-time day job and you're sourcing on the side, you know, you can dump 100% of those small profits back into buying more inventory. But if you're reselling full-time and that's your primary income, you probably don't want to be dumping 100% of it back into uh, back into the business because then you'll have nothing to take home. My idea is that whatever sells that net profit, I keep 50%. And then I break the other 50% down between reinvesting and what goes towards savings and what goes towards investing and that sort of thing. So uh, I reinvest into my business, I pay myself, and then I put money aside for savings and investing in stock market and different um, areas of investment that will return money to me, right? Because building wealth is all about growing your money, making your money grow for you. If you haven't moved into that stage of making money, make money for you and growing your money, multiplying it, I would highly suggest researching, learning and moving into that area. But that's a different subject. We're not on that right now. That's just how my mind thinks about this. A $5 profit uh, is nothing. But if I can roll that and to make into buying more product to then sell each one of those for five bucks. It's everything to me. This is especially true when it comes to fulfillment by Amazon because Amazon is doing all of the heavy lifting, which is picking, packing, shipping, handling returns and all that. $5 is a pretty good number to lock in when you're essentially not doing any of the work besides sourcing the product. I hope this provides clarity and makes sense to you guys. I don't want to cause any kind of confusion and I don't want to uh, lead anyone down the wrong road saying like, you know, one or two dollar profits are okay. To me, one or two dollar profits just are not okay. Um, Five dollars would be really a minimum for anything. I guess it all comes down to percentages. That's really what I look at is percentages. If I can quadruple my money or uh, 10x my money, that's really what makes uh, sense to me. I guess that's, it just has to make sense to you. I'm going to share with you just a few of my weekend sales to show what I am selling and to let you know um, kind of how I am going about things. I'm going to share seven items with you. Uh, I'm going to bring up a screenshot and then I'm going to read from my spreadsheet and tell you exactly the numbers and what everything sold for. First thing would be this touch point Bible. I paid $1. I sold this for $18.99. Uh, after fees, after shipping, I netted $9.32. Uh, my net is after the cost of goods as well. So after all fees, after the price that I paid for the item, after everything is pulled away, after shipping, after everything, I netted $9.32. That is really worth it to me. It's still a small profit, but definitely worth it. Head Taker is another book that I sold. Uh, I paid $1 for this book. I sold it for $29.99. After fees, after shipping, and after the cost of the book, I walked away with $18.79. This is really what I want to be seeing a lot more of. Spend a dollar to make 18 more dollars. This pair of Navy NWU uh, camouflage pants, I paid $2 at the Goodwill outlet. I sold them for a total of $26.89. That's uh, plus shipping on these. So uh, after all the fees, after the shipping, after everything, I came away with $10 net profit. And really $10 net profit is kind of the low end of what I wanna see on this kind of thing because these take up like space and there's, there's more to photograph and you know people want different measurements. So $10 net profit on something like this is really the absolute minimum for what I'm doing, for my, my process and where I'm at in the whole thing. These Mizuno, Wave Rider 14s. I paid $3.50 at the uh, Goodwill outlet for these. I sold them for $35 free shipping. After fees, after shipping, I came away with $11.74 net profit. Uh, that's pretty good for me. I, I feel like that's a solid return. Essentially three times my money for the net profit. This book I had for a while. I couldn't get rid of it on Amazon and uh, it was listed for a little while on eBay. It's called Tinkers by Paul Harding. This was a good condition, first edition, fifth printing. Sold it for $14.99, free shipping. I paid $1.50 for it. After fees, after shipping, after everything, 
I walked away with 682. This is what I'm talking about. I paid $1.50, but I came away with 682 straight to my pocket net profit um, with this book. That's worth it to me. This book, I only included three pictures of this and it was a quick listing. It sat for a while, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. It ships media mail, it's really cheap. And so I can walk away with six bucks. I made a $5 bill plus a $1 bill on top of the price of the book. So I came away in total with $8.32, 682 of that being net profit. These pants, another Goodwill outlet, find express straight leg stretch jeans, um, size eight regular Stella fit. I paid $2 for these estimated $2 at the Goodwill outlet, sold them for $27.89. They were $17.99 plus shipping. So the buyer paid a total of $27.89. After all fees and shipping, I walked away with $13.87 uh, net profit. Now, once again, this is something like there's more photos, you have to take measurements, you have to include these things. Uh, so $13.87 really works for my process, having paid two bucks and then make an additional $13.87 on top of that, that's really good. And then finally, the last item I'm showing today is this, uh, I forgot how to say this, someone schooled me on this. Whenever I made the video of me buying all of these leather handbags from Goodwill Outlet, someone told me how to pronounce it. I wanna say Etienne A Eigner, Etienne Eigner, I guess. Genuine leather shoulder bag. I paid 250, 250 or 350, I think it was 250 at the Goodwill outlet, sold it for $30.89, that's $19.99 plus calculated shipping, came up to $30.89, and I came away with a net profit of $12.02. That's excellent to me. Uh, I would do this all day long. To spend $2.50 to make an additional $12 is just, that seems like good business to me. All of these products that I sold were promoted, so I was paying more than the 10% uh, eBay fee, I was actually, paying, I, I want to say an additional five or 6%, so 16% plus PayPal fees and all that. I did come away paying more in fees. I could have potentially made more profit had I not promoted them. However, all of these sold through the promoted listing, which means I committed to paying extra promotion fees in order to have my item ranked in a certain place on the page. And because it was ranked there, someone clicked on it and they bought through that page listing, which charges a little bit extra from me, but it gets the item sold. For some people, this works. For some people, it doesn't. Me personally, it really works out great. I'm happy to have this bag out. I'm happy to have the storage space in my um, purses bin. And I look forward to finding more items like this very soon at uh, the Goodwill Outlet when they reopen, which will hopefully be next week. Guys, I really want to know your thoughts about how you price things and what your minimum allowable takeaway profit is from items. Uh, drop those down in the comments. Let's have a conversation about this because I'm just sharing what works for me, but what works for me is not necessarily gonna work for everybody. And so since there are so many different people that see these types of videos and so many different people on different levels of selling, uh, your comments in the comment section is super valuable to other people. Person A might be on a completely different level than person B compared to me. And so let's talk about this and see where we're all at. We can help each other hone down how to price things and to determine what are the acceptable, allowable profit margins or profit amounts that we can take. That's all I have for this video today. Coming right up are some fishing video clips um, from this past week. I caught four. Uh, really good fish on Friday, so stick around if you want to see those. But before that, let me just thank you for watching this video. If you got any kind of value out of it, be sure to leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching. If you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell. And until next time, keep selling, get the bag, and I'll see you on the next video. Here's these fishing clips. Put my gloves on for this guy because he has some massive teeth and I don't want to deal with him. You can see there's a chain pickerel. Got some teeth in there. Not a pleasant guy to deal with. That was an adolescent, so that's not the biggest chain pickerel that I've caught in this pond. Now the biggest one I caught was about uh, 
maybe 18 inches. I don't know. They like this bait, that's for sure. Got one. Got another one. Got another pickerel. These guys will bite right through your line because their teeth are so strong. Man, slight another one. Look at that. Incredible. Look at that guy. What a beast. These guys are just vicious. Anything that swims by, they will just kill it. If he had got that lure in his mouth, he would have totally, he'd have totally bit the line. Look at this. Look at his teeth. Look at those teeth. You put your finger in there. Yeah, you're toast. This guy is a monster. Look at that. Look at the teeth up top. What a mean fish. This is what I cut both those chain pick roll on. It's just a little blaze orange rooster tail. Apparently they like this color. Got one, got one, got another one. You gotta be kidding me, come on. Yes. Let's see this guy. Let's see him. Are you guys keeping your fish? I caught a few pickerel already. I threw them out because they, uh, they're real aggressive. All we're doing is fishing for um, catfish bait. Oh, cool, yeah. Cool, well, if I catch any more of these uh, chain pickerel, I'll, I'll bring them down here. All right, cool, man.